I made all the dishes, I made all the food, like the actual, like, I'm gonna eat out of it dishes. You know, I made the introduction, and then Hilma's ghost did the ritual, and we, you know, had a sort of curated group of people there-ish, but there was also space for people to sort of make their own experience. So that's something that is, there's nothing public about that, um, but that's happening more and more in my practice. That's, and, and I would say like life, life goals is to die without any of my own art, or very little, right? So Give it away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, so I guess we're gonna we're gonna dive into our, our questions. Um, first one's a bit of a doozy, so you know, be as concise or not as possible. Um, <laughs> the first question here that we pose to everybody is, uh, how does your organization fulfill its mission of support um, to your specific arts community and the greater community beyond that? And how do you define community in this context, which I think is just as important because if you're gonna serve something, you got to figure out what it is that your your kind of your audience, I guess, you're like where where is that all going? I would um, I'll take a crack at that. Yeah, because yeah. we do a lot of thinking about that. So I, I would say that we serve our communities by listening to them and actually responding to what they say. Like sometimes it takes us a couple years. Some things are harder to respond to than others, but we ask, we listen, we respond. And when I say our communities, I mean the artists who come to Wasaic. And we sort of define that as artists who are interested in our place. And people are interested in our place for lots of different reasons. Right? Sometimes it's like get out of the city and have a change of pace. Sometimes it's you know, the facilities that we offer. Sometimes it's the exhibition opportunities or you know, utilizing the print shop or whatever. But it's, it's really, that's like the container, right? Our summer exhibitions, we're not purporting to be like a survey of contemporary artists or like even American artists or even the New York City area artists. We have international artists, but everybody's interested in our, in our place. And that's kind of like a guiding factor, you know, theme for us maybe. Yeah. Um, and then with our, you know, with our local community, you know, we track the zip codes of visitors and we're over half Dutchess County and, and local Wasaic and Amenia residents. And, you know, we, it drives me nuts when people are like, oh, it's like Brooklyn, come upstate. I'm like, well, here actually, here's the numbers. Here's the data. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, nope, yeah, yeah. it's actually not. Yep. Um, and a lot of that is, um, just outreach. We have really, really good relationships with our community, and that's partly because we program with our stakeholders. We make program programming together with our stakeholders, not for our stakeholders. So again, that's about listening, but it's also about making the space so you can listen. So your programming meeting is not like, you know, me and my artistic director, and then we present it to the fire department. It's <laughs> me and the fire department and our programming director and their, you know, people who run their programming and we say, what do you guys want to do? What's the experience that you want to have? What have you, you done in the past? How can we support? What are the resources you have? What do we have? And, and that's where the programming emerges. Um, and we do that with our artists too. And sometimes the artists and the fire department, you know, and the library and, <laughs> yeah. you know, the bar. And, so that's, that's how we approach that at, at the Wasaic project. Awesome. Anybody else? Yeah, to um, to sort of to sort of echo the, I begin to think about the question first with the second question as opposed to the first, which was how do you define community within a context of what you're asking? And I guess to to kind of put it bluntly, it would be community is the, uh, like artists, and if we had to define it further, at least for Gallery in the in the case of Gallery of Faro, the um, the specific arts community would be. Newark artists, and then the greater community beyond would be New Jersey artists writ large. I was sort of having a similar kind of thought experiment of if we had to round up the um, the zip code, for lack of a better word, of every, of every artist who's either had a studio at Gallery of Faro or who's exhibited or who's donated to our uh, yearly fundraiser, um, it would be you know, we would have international artists, we would have uh, New York artists from New York and beyond, but it would primarily be New Jersey artists. And I think even um, the, the number of artists from New Jersey outside of Newark might be bigger than the number of artists from, from New Jersey and Newark. Um, so those are, those are the confines with which I kind of 
understood the question. And I think if, um, despite those facts, however, we're trying to also uh, look at Newark, New Jersey first. Um, we are not attempting to limit the resources solely to Newark, um, but that's our home base and that's uh, who, like what we understand ourselves to be as a, as a gallery that is purporting to um, exhibit the work of emerging artists uh, to give some artists their first breaks, for example, to tap into the the artists in residence for uh, exhibition opportunities as opposed to being solely uh, like a think tank in the office about, okay, what's contemporary? What are the kinds of exhibitions that we ought to sort of have right now? Um, and the I've been curating, I guess, taking the lead on curating since last year, but the, I guess the, the whole vibe all the way through has been who, like who in, who do we think, who do we feel, who are we getting a sense that's about to like do something really, really awesome with them, with themselves and their practice. And it kind of becomes like a, um, are we friends with that person already? How do we become friends with that person? Would they like to have an exhibition at Gallery of Faro? And we don't, we're, we're an arts nonprofit. We don't guarantee uh, a sellout. We don't guarantee uh, to place your work in in uh, institutions. Um, but we guarantee like a, a banger of a of an art opening. <laughs> that much that much we can. Um, and it's and it's been so interesting to see the the rise like post pandemic of like just getting with each progressive exhibition, the number of people in the room and how little of the floor you can see begins to match more and more the like pre-pandemic uh, yeah. experience. Um, and so just to kind of peter out, it also has to do with like the kinds of resources you're interested in offering and how you're interested in offering them. Um, I believe at present, the Gallery of Faro has the, the cheapest artist studios in the city of Newark. And some of those studios are subsidized through fellowships even. So we're not making a lot of bank out of our studio residency. And that's kind of by design. Um, and it, uh, it sort of, it becomes, a, it becomes a point of inflection or even a point of like, uh, like chagrin with a couple of people who don't kind of understand what that ethos is about. Um, but it sort of was designed that way, and when I sort of came into the position that I'm in, absorbed understanding of why it is that way, and I, I don't have an interest in questioning that decision anytime soon. Um, so it, uh, so that's also the thing, sort of designing the resources to be available for the people who you wish would be taking advantage of them, is also part of the question. Totally. Awesome. Jump in on that. Yeah. <laughs> on the same token as um, affordable studios, um, down at Shamat, um, we, I, I think of it as a launching pad for artists in, say, central Jersey or se like down the shore, if you will. Um, if you look at, at Shishama in the city, there's multiple resources for artists. Um, we do below market rate studios and galleries and pop-ups. Um, but we, seven years ago, Anita Durst and I sat down and we created Shamat in a, it was an old Ford dealership. And now I, I'll do an open call on Instagram. It's very informal. Like when I ran the museum, it was, it was everything was structured and it was based on this funding versus that funding, and now it's, I don't meet with boards, I meet with Anita, and then I put out an open call on Instagram, and I end up with, I just pick out of whatever looks most interesting, but it's a spot where artists can come, and curators can come, and they get a thousand square foot gallery, and they can experiment. You can do the things that you can't do in most spots, unless, you know, there's, there are certain requirements, like you can, like it, there, are, there are limits, but basically if you stay within the limits, you can do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's subsidized, it's free. And the studio spaces are well below market rate. And it's 20 minutes from the beach, so <laughs> it's a good spot. If you want to come, let me know. <laughs> but but it, we have a good time, and 
<laughs> so I encourage you to check it out on our website. Sha Madawan. <laughs> 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 that was Anita's name. <laughs> Um, I, I thought of two things uh, with the you know, definition of community. One, I thought it was so interesting that uh, we kind of talking about like co communing physic like together as, as an active community. Um, just being in this room, we are a community right now, um, which I think about all the time. Um, for me, uh, sculpture as a medium is community based. Um, one, because I started making larger scale works like 10 years ago and I was incredibly humbled by how much of it I couldn't do by myself. And then also in addition, there's so much of these things like with just my ambition in general. Um, so many times have I called people who know better than me to just be like, hey, so I remember this piece that you did this one time. and. Uh, did you use this or did you use a ground screw? Um, the amount of times I call uh, Josh um, <laughs> about these types of technical things, or but even in general, this is your community. And for me, making sculpture has always been in that way. And so then coming to an institution that is steeped in education, I come from a very different angle um, than a lot of the students who come through. And so the people who are coming into our shop, I consider to be incredibly lucky and very biased because they get a chance to sort of experience this community aspect within our space. Um, Teachers College is very special because it regards studio as research. Um, and I agree with that. It's, it's part of it. Visual arts research methods is a thing. What you're doing in your studio is part of what's happening, even if it's writing or making, anything like that. And um, so the students that come through, I, we get to sort of teach, kind of teach them through that lens, and then slowly but surely they start to evolve these communities within themselves. Um, my favorite day um, when I was teaching sculpture this summer was when they just like straight up didn't need me anymore. Um, I was like, like sitting off in the corner because they were helping each other. Um, they started to trust each other, they listened to each other, they started to create this community within the classroom, and I was just like, okay, I guess I'll just like go sit down. Um, <laughs> if anyone need, forgets where a tool is, like give me a give me a holler. Um, but that's really the, the sort of the special thing we get to do in our studio um, within this larger institution, which is wonderful. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to just jump in for a second because I will say, as like the caretaker of a facility, who's you know sort of a, like I was yeah, saying, saying back across the street. Um, you know, you sort of design, um, on our website, we call it a collider space, right? And everybody goes, what the hell is that? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, from my thinking, it's basically, as Eve calls it, the container, um, where you sort of like an idea accelerator for things to kind of spin around, and then everybody's got this orbit that's just constantly crashing into each other, <laughs> and you have these amazing moments of like, just like uh, on a Sunday morning, you'll wander in and you'll see three people who may have kind of known each other, but by happenstance are all in the studio at the same time together, having a critique about somebody else's work that's just hanging on the wall, you know, um, and talking about the kind of the, the people helping each other. It's sort of very encouraged for Skillshare to happen, right? Where anybody who knows how to do something can show somebody else that needs to know how to do something. Um, and it's really that, those golden moments where you walk in and you know, I click on the security cameras, I'm drinking my coffee, I have my morning <laughs> cigarette, and I'm like, what the hell are those guys doing, you know? And I'm like, all right, well, let me get out of this office and go walk over there and see what's up, you know? And they're like, oh, dude, I just met this guy and he knows my top, I do with the my top, you know? And it's like, it's like, you know, I love it. It's like, you know, it, I, 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 would, I would like to say, Jersey gets smaller by the day. And that's, and, and I will say, Garden Ship, we are a very Jersey-centric organization, you know? Um, I love this place, um, and if you don't, in Jersey, we have a saying, it's called hide and go fuck yourself. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and, and can I just say, like, in terms of community, and if you look at 14C right now, and what's going on, JCAS, 14C, there's been this movement from south to north Jersey where when we first started JCAS 20 years ago, it was, it was us in Jersey City. Yeah. And now, it's across the state. It's almost almost like New York Upstate Weekend. <laughs> and everyone's trying to, like, we're actually, but, and uh -huh. we're trying to do a weekend. Apparently, there's a, a movement. Oh, but, we're gonna we're gonna but, talk about that anyway. Yeah, yeah, I've got I've got some ideas, and I've got some anyway. Um, that'll be that'll be a whole inspired. other panel discussion. <laughs> okay. 
of but, like uh, how we can really get the flex on. You but know? I just want to say, like, it's it's grown. I mean, the, the, the thing that's interesting about the Jersey art community is years ago, there was this idea that we were going to, like, build a thing and we were going to get pe people to come over from Brooklyn. And I'm going to just hijack this for a second. Right? <laughs> and there was, there was just this, this whole idea of, like, well, we need to get the Brooklyn scene to come over to Jersey. And I know Eve, so Eve brought me into this project very yeah. early. And I, and I was very upfront to the point of maybe being brash that, like, I, people have approached me about this project before. If you think I'm going to build a thing so that we can get some Manhattanites over here, like, thanks for lunch, but see you later, right? Like, I'm only interested in this if I can, we can create the container to be the aggregator for all the things that are going on here, right? There's, you know, and, and as it goes on and the time goes on, we sort of cohese this sort of like Jersey scene, right? Yep. Um, that, that's been happening, but my whole thing was like, we have all those parts, right? We don't, you know, and, and not to be just like placey, but like we have all the things. There's just like nobody's really talks about it and everybody's very siloed. So to kind of create this node or this space where you can kind of become the connector is like has been really why I was very interested in starting this project. That and like, I don't know, I needed a place to plug my welders in. So, you know, every, everybody goes home happy. Yeah, exactly. And I need, I need to store my, my garbage. Yep. Um, anyway, um, so we'll, we'll move on to the next one here. Um, the, the formal question is, what are the challenges and things that you have had to overcome uh, from your physical space in achieving your mission? Like what, you know, what, what was broken on the container or what was not there that you had to build as the container? Um, to make it happen. So, who wants to jump in? Biddle's giving me the eyes. It's all, it's it's all on, broken all It's the on you, E-Town. Yeah. Yep. It's so much broken. Yeah, yeah we, um, we in, just in the past few years, we acquired all of our buildings, and it's like a blessing and a curse. Um, speaking of physical space, can you just give us a little kind of primer for those of you that don't <laughs> yeah. know the Wasag Project? It is like this like magical fairyland off the Amtrak line in upstate New York, Metro right? Metro North, Metro North. You know, yeah. uh, Metro North, sorry, my bad. Cheaper. Sorry, CSX. Yes. Uh, okay, so our flagship building is an old mill. It's seven stories, metal clad in the Hudson, like far east Hudson Valley. And then our main studio building in the summers is what was originally a community barn built in 1875 and expanded in 1945 as a livestock auction barn. So it's this very like strange, sprawling space basically designed to not let cattle move too quickly. <laughs> so, you know, there's like lots of twists and turns. Um, and then we're in four residential buildings throughout town and we're in the process of acquiring a historic church. Oh. which is really Ooh, soup, fun and exciting. Fun. And everything leaks and needs improvements, and there's no air conditioning anywhere, and that's amazing and really fun. Um, but we have, I think that our biggest lesson from our spaces and our place is how important expectations are and how to communicate effectively what our assets are and what our limitations are. Um, and we've gotten a lot better at it over the years, but we've had some you know, fuck ups along the way. Sure. And um, I think that's like the most challenging, right? Because when your expectations aren't met, it's, it's just incredibly disappointing, whatever it's about, you know, whether it's like the air conditioning or, you know, the facilities or, you know, your companions or whatever. Um, so I think that's sort of been our, really our like biggest emotional challenge. I mean, we can talk about the French drains and the flashing, but oh, that's like just that's just going to be a thing forever, and that's okay. It is, you know, kind of is, yeah. I yeah. I know Donna probably has something to say about the, the water. <laughs> so mid COVID, we get in Sean Matawan, which we also call sixty main. We get a sewer main break. <laughs> yeah, shitty. it was like the plus side of having no municipal sewage. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> there you go. Just, just dig the pit. The grass is always green. But you know, there, yeah. luckily um, we're connected to the Durst organization, so we had support. We cleaned it up. Um, part of our mission is um, taking these buildings that are almost in the liminal space, where they could be going under foreclosure, or they're going to be sold or torn down. But we historically it was in Manhattan, but out in the 
outpost. Out in the wilds of New Jersey. <laughs> they thought we were squatters. The, the town came out and they were like, they gave me all kinds of stuff. Because I'm in there in my like, pajamas, you know. I'm like, I get called, I'm like, oh my God, and it's like knee deep. And it was terrifying. Um, but they sent people out, and by the time they made a few phone calls, they realized who was involved and that the mayor had come to our opening. We're part of the Chamber of Commerce. And they were like, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. But at yeah. first they were like, what are you, whatever, squat? He's doing it. Yeah, yeah. And they were like, oh, this is great. But we cleared it out. Um, there's a new owner of the building, and it's we, we develop relationships with developers, as we know. But the b big issue with MySpace is that we don't, I don't know from day to day what's, what's going to happen to the space, because that's the nature of Shishama. It's temporary space. And we all go in knowing that it could be gone in the moment's notice. Yeah, I, w I was like to say there is a clock that's running, but it has no hands on it. Wow. Yeah. You know? So it's, you have to be in a mind, I have to be in a mind frame. <laughs> it's, it's ticking, but you have no idea what time it is. It's like, well, <laughs> it could be tomorrow, but it could be it's, ten years. It, it's been seven years. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but now the new owner is really grateful because we redid the, all the drywall and made it functional, and now the, the building is still standing. Otherwise, they would have had to tear it down because it would yeah. have become a sick building. So that's part of the benefit of Shishama. Mm. And a tax break. Yeah, and the tax write-off, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, Juno, I'm sure you have some interesting things yeah. to say about space. So similar <laughs> similar to, I'm, I'm in a, Gallery Affair exists in a very similar boat to everything, uh, everything Donna is describing. You know, not only in the, like the, that like ticking clock that is like just kind of, that looms over your head constantly. Uh, sometimes you remember it, and sometimes you forget. Sometimes, yeah. Um, I think. Ignorant. <laughs> I mean, some some days, yes. Some yeah. days, no. The um, I so, I sort of I take this question and I'm, I'm, I answer it sort of like in a in a, in a legacy kind of uh, position because I think the the bulk of if you had I mean if you had Yvonne in this seat, Yvonne Davis in this seat instead of me, she'd be able to tell you about you know the like like scooping like. Uh, Shovelfuls of like rats from, rats and from dead, 73 and Market Street. And, you know, and I, I, I was there. Say, and our, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And Donna was involved a little bit. <laughs> I, I, I you know, I was lucky to help them unearth an elevator that had crashed in the basement that was behind a wall. You yeah. Know? We found it. We just like happenstance found an elevator car, you know? Yeah, it, uh, it's, Yvonne was like, I think. And I was like, well, I got a hammer. <laughs> yeah. It, uh, that elevator, that elevator <laughs> shaft now houses a uh, permanent audio installation. Um, so the, the, the lot of it is like things I've, so a pharaoh has been eminent domain. A pharaoh has had to kind of uh, make a exhibition space out of the first floor of a, uh, like a, a, then, a then abandoned, not abandoned, not in use. Furniture store. Furniture store, yes. Yeah. Um, inside a 120 year old brick building with uh, like difficult, Airflow and and heat in the winter, but that costs a lot of money because it's oil and a boiler. Um, so the and water forever. There's just like just it, forever. It uh and and the, it poses a challenge because as you know we don't own our building. We have a good ongoing relationship with the landlord and the sort of landlord's superintendent who like runs up and down the block every week making sure at least at this time of year that everyone's boilers are on and that everyone's elevators are working um but where where's i going i don't know it's something is, is it rbh still it's rbh it still yeah, yeah something to oh something to do with the effect of you know we kind of were there i think i guess the biggest ongoing challenge is reminding people reminding the artists and residents of the fact that if we if we use, you know, funds to replace the roof, we can't pay the staff. So you deal with the, you deal with the leaks, my guy. I'm so sorry. Yeah, right. Um, Here's we'll, three bucks. Go to Home Depot and buy a bucket. Well, we have we have a lot of strategically placed buckets. We like, we but like I'm I, I ingest, but I uh, we have, and we are constantly making improvements to the building in sort of. A thing that you're saying because it's it's an ongoing thing it, uh, an old building will show its age at every turn you know so there's a there's a way to kind of sort of stabilize the current workflow and then try to address 
uh, like a, I don't know, like a screaming red priority. Um, but then when those are addressed, it kind of like runs smoothly into the next thing. Yeah. And it's just an understanding that the next thing is always going to exist, whether it's around the corner or like around that corner or around that corner far away over there. But um, it's there. Um, I, I used to joke with my, I, I own a, well, I, I have a couple of spaces in Newark uh, that we rent studios in and I always used to joke that like, the catastrophes are just opportunities for community. You know, it's like every, everybody's in the same shit show. So like, you know, let's have some pizza. <laughs> um, uh, storage, like mm. straight, like straight up. Um, one of the, like, storage. One of the things that's really hard is that we don't have like the, view of any sort of expansion just like doesn't it doesn't exist um we are at the brims in our studio as it is we barely have rooms for students to store their projects they keep giving me new tools which is so so cool um but you know a giant cnc machine in the middle of my wood shop that's half the size of this room makes it a little hard um physical space honestly for me comes in the form of like mega safety concerns basically um, i have to limit so much making which hurts my heart but it's true because their safe like their safety is on my watch and so um just people like moving and it's like always constantly moving in space there's a really interesting dance that happens in our um, wood shops and such and the other thing that's interesting is being connected uh with the institution is that i can't fix anything, which is really strange. So it's like, oh, there's something, there's things that I can fix. There's a hole in the wall, there's paint, there's something, and they're like, well, that's union. You don't, you know, there's some parts of it that you can't do. Um, so there's definitely been a like, sort of training that um, I have, like I've gotten a, a, thankfully I've gotten to know all the lovely people who come and help and work in our shop and we talk about tools and things and, um, and so I'll like call them up and be like, hey Mario, are you gonna come like do this? And, and so that's really nice, but um, it is a strange thing to sort of stop yourself from fixing the problems. Oh yeah. Which is, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I know it's like in all of our DNA to see something that's broken and like go get, all right, like somebody yeah. go get the battery jumper, like let's get this thing running, you know? Yeah. Um, and I know we do it all the time across the street, you know, thank God, thank God, um, Hugo New has been amazing. They're like, if there's a roof leak, tell us where, please. We don't want to lose the roof and somebody goes up. So that's like one thing we don't necessarily have to deal with, but there's a bunch of others. Um, we live in a, a swamp land down here. So like the earth is sort of slowly reclaiming a lot of parts of the building. And, you know, we're, uh, the next project we're going to undertake is, uh, our front door, which you guys came in through the big roll-up door because I was a little embarrassed to have you come through the personnel door, which is completely separated itself because the frame is racked because the building is coming into the ground here and not into the ground there. So it's wow. really like a three-part yeah. door with a drippy cardboard falling out of it. It's a Dutch door. It's a it's death a new, trap a uh, Dutch deluxe, Dutch you know. Um, <laughs> So anyway, you can, as, as we go back across the street, we can all sort of like poke and laugh. Um, there's a great mural inside though, so I'm gonna cut that off and we'll put that in the bathroom. Because um, everybody should be curating your bathroom, but that's a different panel. Um, you know, so um, well, let's move on to our, our, our final long-term question and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit these guys with some rapid fire and hopefully we'll have some fun with that. Um, so the last thing is um, what are the philosophical guiding principles and uh, of your organization or your practice and how does that apply to the intangible culture within your organization so like what's the what's the thing that makes it spin and like how does that how does everybody feel about it so I went and uh, I texted uh, Jacob Mandel who's currently at his sister's uh, uh, a wedding, wedding dinner yeah. rehearsal, and I was like, clarify this for me right now. Um, because this was a, a question that I needed a little bit of like, what? What's I, going I, on? I will What's say, going so on? coming up with these questions, Jacob, we, you know, I, I don't know if anybody peeked into the office, but we have like the ultimate bullpen, right? So I run four organizations out of that office, so there's a lot of crosstalk. <laughs> And a lot of times Miguel will be editing something, screaming questions to me. Jacob's like, I need an answer on this. We got to send an email out. And Neil's like, did you get the drawings I sent you? So this was sort of like one of those afternoons where I was like, yes, yes, hold on. All right, Jacob, boom, 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 boom. <laughs> All right, Neil, I got the drawings. I'm looking at them, right? And Jacob was like, okay. 
to clarify, I got my <laughs> clarification and was able to sort of answer the question for myself. The clarification, hold on. Yeah. What, did, what did he say? Oh, yeah. Let's we said clarification. Come on, give us some Mendel speak. He said, so, ta -ta 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 -ta, Jacob Mendel. Um, I was like, I'm sorry to bother you. Please clarify this for me. And he was like, yeah, Josh came up with the questions. And then I was like, it's cool. Right Just yeah. give me some insight, please. And he, he said, yeah, I would say it's like, how does your mission and ideology guide your organization, uh, your organizational decision making, um, and how does that affect and manifest within your work culture? So it's much more succinct. So then that made sense. Um, and. I went to, I, I started thinking, and my life, I guess, in the arts in New Jersey, I, um, I'm, I'm not 30, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm like not as experienced as everybody who is here. And so I kind of, when I graduated, I'm so, no, I'm trying to, I'm trying to know. <laughs> I'm trying to con I'm trying to contextualize the thing that I'm about to Girl, say next, <laughs> which is that when I like, like I, I graduated Ramapo and then just sort of like started swimming in the like the newer arts, the swap everything, <laughs> um, and of course the first person I meet who's of any consequence, you know, after people like Gallery of Fair was Victor Dowson, uh, founder of uh, Algiers Center for Contemporary Art, uh, which sunsetted in 2018. Uh, he's making humongous landscape paintings these days, which are really beautiful. And I was his assistant for uh, the last uh, six years until the creative director thing happened. Um, and so, which is to say, when I think about, when I, when I switch on art brain, part of my art brain is nurtured by his art brain. And so something I've always heard Victor Davson describe uh, Gallery of Pharaoh with words were things like sweat equity and uh, and Emma has Emma Wilcox, our one of our co-founders, has used the term bohemian at times to describe our residency program. And I think I've already in the introduction uh, kind of used the term like DIY or if I haven't DIY is one of the sort of guiding principles of how we even got the residency program up and running. Um, and so these are like, these are things you begin to understand when you've been there a while and sort of those are the philosophies that then not only guide how you put up a wall, but also how you operate the program within that wall you built. Um, so it's a lot of like understanding to use a less glamorous term, understanding that what you like, um, what did I write here? What you see is what you get a little bit. Um, and that's a nicer way of saying it is what it is. Um, but like within the confines of this building, which can only be, which kind of plateaus in the amount of improvements that you can make to it, because like we can't unbrickify this brick building to make Wi-Fi be real good up four stories. You know, it's like that's a that's a that's a real challenge. Right. Um, and so like with like with that in mind, how do you still overcome that kind of a challenge despite the fact that you can't fix that problem or it would be a bit unsurmountable to fix that problem? How do you still have uh, a residency that you know is successful? How do you still uh, come up with programming that like is exciting and that is vibrant and that and how do you how do you you know show art that's really really good so it's it's a little bit about kind of like uh, looking at pro arts or mana and not being jealous and just kind of doing your thing you know I, I <laughs> you know to that end real quick like I like to think of us as like the anti mana you know we're like we're like we're like I love hey, mana for the record no, yeah 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 <laughs> Moishi uh, keep, no keep comment. doing it thank you thank you but like but but we are big but we're foul we're filthy um, you know a lot of my a lot of you know Miguel is gonna give me a look for this like everybody everybody on my team is always like okay so we're gonna host this event like can we clean this fucking place? And I'm like, <laughs> no, we cannot. It's 100,000 square feet. Right. Like, it would, it would cost us an arm and a leg, and it would take all of you a month. So, like, sure, 
throw out the garbage, <laughs> rearrange the chairs. Uh, but I always say, like, make it presentable, but let's be honest. Come on. Like, I, I mean, I'm not, we're, we're not putting on any airs over here. And, like, what do we do? We make a mess for a living. So, like, that. Eh, fuck it. If you don't like it, then go somewhere else, you know? Anyway. <laughs> or wear black jeans. Just wear black jeans. You'll be fine. Yes. Just, just wear, wear black, black jeans. jeans. Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Black My jeans. Advice. That's it. They still get the gray, the light like, gray on them. Right? <laughs> Uh, it's, it's actually been incredibly challenging for us as we've grown and appeared more professional. And yeah. so, you know, like we have a really beautiful website, right? You walk into our office and like, it is clearly run by artists. <laughs> like there's shit everywhere. It's really colorful. Like, but you, we run into this, it, 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 it plays into the expectations challenge, right? Where like the website's really slick. Well, why doesn't the ceiling in the studio have drywall? <laughs> like I'm like, oh, it's, it's just insulation, just spray it up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you got to fix the roof before we put the dry Okay, yeah. I get it. I see what you're seeing. You know, I mean and there's photos online whatever. It's like we really have put a lot out there, but um we're also a staff of nine, and most of us are also practicing artists, and we really believe in what we're doing. And it's very, it's a very self-directed independent team, and uh, when you really care about the people that you're serving, it's incredibly hard to have boundaries, right? <laughs> so a lot of my job is like, like with my team of amazing, amazing, nurturers and artists and programmers is coaching people how to say no, yeah. right? Like, I know you want to be friends with that artist, but when they text you at 11.30 that they missed the earlier train and they need you to pick them up, the answer can be, there's a rail trail you can walk. Or you can just ignore your phone until the morning and say, oh, I didn't see this, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you know, it's like that, it's really, really challenging, right? Because our staff is also interested in building community, right? Everyone is, you know, coming to the residency to meet people. We've got, you know, between nine and 12 people at a time. We're also running an exhibitions program. We're serving over 100 artists a year, right? I mean, we're, we're like really um, bringing people through and we're interested in making connections personally for the organization. You know, most, like, we're sort of like a funnel, right? Like. We've got 70 or 80 people coming through the residency every year, and then people are proposing for the exhibitions, and we're showing maybe 50 artists a year through the exhibitions, and there's the summer group shows, and then the winter shows are like only 10 people, and maybe you're getting 1,000 square feet, you know, and we're working with 10 people. You know, we have an 8,000 square foot gallery space over seven floors, and also outside. Mm. Um, <laughs> So, you know, and then sometimes we'll like, and then the funnel will go down further and we'll like, you know, do an NEA commission, you know, and so uh, there are these long-term relationships to be maintained and, you know, you, I want to be able to say yes to everything and, you know, it's not just that I'm coaching people to say no, a lot of my job is saying no. You know, no, we don't have enough money to do that. No, we cannot you know, make your food. No, we cannot give you, you know, another bedroom. I mean, a lot of it is saying yes, right? I mean, we started, we have now one of the biggest family residencies in the country, and we started that because we kept getting asked, can I bring my kid? Can I bring my husband who has PTSD? Can I bring my mom? Can I bring whatever? And where I think the only family residency that defines ourselves as a care, as a self-defined caregiver residency. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So it's like, I don't know what you, you know, like, I don't know what you need. Who am I? What you need, yeah, you need right. Break. That's yeah. so crazy. Like, mm. you, know. you know, so there, there's a lot of like yes, and there's there's really a lot of no. Partly because if I said yes to everything, I would be out of my mind. Like it, it would just be complete burnout for yeah. everybody, right? Like complete burnout all the time. And we did that the first year of our residency in 2010. We were like, let's never do this again, <laughs> you know? And then it was like, oh, do we just have to like say no to some stuff? Okay, cool. It was totally magical. Was magical. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I don't even remember what the question was. Oh, office culture. That's right. So it's like, it's really boundary <laughs> building, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's, and there is this like push pull between like, you know, yeah, let's figure it out. We do, we start a lot of shit without money for it. Because, I, because we're like, oh, we can, we can, we'll make it work, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Whereas like most bigger institutions, even institutions our size, um, sort of like astounded at how sort of big we are now, 
will say, that's a great idea for a program, let's apply for funding. And maybe the program will start like in three years, mm -hmm. which is super rational. Like do the program when you can pay for the program instead of like do the program when you're gonna like work nights for the program, you know? Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's really, it's interesting. But I do think that there is, there's like a culture of yes, even though I just said I coach people to say no. Ooh. Um, and I think that, that there's really a, a culture of boundary setting to preserve your ability to serve. That's what we're trying to cultivate. And also kind of recognizing the strengths of everyone else on the team, right? That's like the key to collaborating, is not hoping that the person you're collaborating with is good at the same things that you're good at. Yeah. It's, mm -hmm. oh, you're better at that. Please do that. I celebrate you being better at that. I love, I'll go I do love, this other thing. I love when people are better at stuff than me. It's like shit that I can just cross off my list. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and I have to say, that project and Wasaic was magic. <laughs> and then um, comparing it to, say, Sean North, um, I know they try to go with the culture of yes as much as possible. Um, but it's, I'm going to talk about New Jersey, but they, uh, together in that region, I think they serve artists, Wasaic and Sean North. If you haven't checked it out, check it out, <laughs> that's all I have to say. Um, but I'm just going to do the Shashama pitch, if I may. Lay it on me. <laughs> uh, see if I can do this right. It's short and sweet, but um, because when I started with Sean North, I mean, Sean, Sean Matt, I'm <laughs> forgetting where I'm at. Um, I had come from the culture of Algyra and Alfero. And so it's space, I can't even talk, space to present and space to create. And I, I started this and I had this open space. We built, it was like a, just a big cavern of a space. No walls, no slap sink, no Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, and it was leaking, and we, we had to put sump pumps in, and we had to fix it up. But, like, I just forgot what I was going to say when I looked at you. Um, <laughs> Damn it, Josh. Damn it, Josh. Um, <laughs> no, so we, okay, so space to present and space to, it's very simple. Like, you need the space, we have the space. It's very affordable. Um, and it's literally, I just forgot what I was saying again. I'm getting old. Oh, yeah. Oh, the pitch. pitch. Yeah, give me the pitch. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sell me. <laughs> <laughs> so you bring your ideas to me. And it's, it's very simple. I, I approve it. I send it to the office. And because, okay, literally, the reason I brought up a pharaoh is that I was talking to Emma and Yvonne, the founders, and they're like, well, what are your boundaries? Like, what, what, what is this space about? Like, is it feminist? Is it based on whatever, whatever the thing is of the moment? The <laughs> you know, like, what's, what's, why are you doing this? What is the space about? And I was like, um, I called Anita. I was like, what is, what is this space about? And she was like, it's a space to present and a space to create. And that's it. But she, like her family is connected to so much real estate in Manhattan. It's constantly changing. There's this flux. But you never know what, if it's going to be there <laughs> three months, yeah. or like we said, um, or seven years, or 20 years. Um, but literally, that's it. Like I, I, I had to come back to them, and I said, that's it. There, there's, there are no boundaries. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. Within reason. <laughs> Within reason, yeah. I was like, hmm. You know, <laughs> yeah. but, you know, for New Jersey, it's pretty open-ended, open-minded. Wow. And it, we've become kind of a, a cultural hub for the Jersey Shore. Sure, yeah. I get all the queer kids and adults. And, like, we, it's, it's really, it's kind of amazing. For the area, which is Monmouth County. Yeah, you, I mean, there's not much else that offers <laughs> anything close to that down there. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a fun yeah. space. I, I'd love for you guys, if you have any questions, reach out after yeah. Donna at Shashama. Yeah. Donna. We'll, uh, we can, we'll, we'll advertise everybody's email. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I see people that could be showing. Okay. Um, I just want to echo 
kind of what Eve was hitting on with um, the power of the word no. Um, and, um, you know, uh, teachers a lot of times are nurturers and we just want to like help everybody all the time. And so imagine having an entire institution that's just full, like full to the brim of them. Um, so a lot of times it's me tell, like helping people to like understand that it's okay if it's not in their capacity to move forward with something, mm -hmm. students and colleagues alike. Um, one of the greatest parts about sort of being in charge of the space I'm in charge of is I get to make that culture and lead like through example with that culture. Like something incredibly just basic, but just like if you're sick, don't go to work. Like it is the amount of times, uh, the amount of types of like messages I get and the things that come through. Oh, I could if I do, and, and I'll just take that. I'm like, stay home. And I know it's a different type of culture with you know post COVID or post COVID, um, but you know, something like that. Even just setting that example and making those parameters and having that be a focus of like sort of well being within your space. Um, has been transformative. Um, and especially because, in, for me at least, the sculpture studio is a really embodied space. We're constantly in conversation with bodies, and we're using our body to create our work. And so the idea that you should be thinking about it and taking care of it, and that's a part of the central mission of the space, is really important to me as, we, as I sort of create it. Just like a little button at the end of that. I yeah. actually think that, like, kind of circling back to the idea of container, I actually think that creating the boundaries of a container makes for more like productivity and success. Because yeah. if an artist actually understands, like if it's sort of like you like push up against it and you're like, okay, this is my space, I can go. Instead of this kind of like, oh, if I ask for this, like what if I go down this road? And like, oh, I'm kind of over there. It's like, this is not a winding path. Like this is, yeah. this is the space, this is the mm -hmm. play area. Go, mm -hmm. you know, right. and then they go. Yeah. yeah. You, it's, it's actually like setting clear boundaries makes for happier artists. Yeah, no, you, you sort of took you sort of took my two cents. Um, that that kind of the that's the idea, right? It's like too many choices, right? It's like you know we, in in the development world, right? I'm I'm we're working on this other project where we're going to kind of do some like hopefully we'll do some um, kind of affordable housing, some things like that, and we we're kind of having this design meeting the other day, and I said no we should offer two, maybe three choices, right? And that's it. Because analysis paralysis is real, right? And, and pervasive. It can absolutely stop a project, an idea, um, something from coming to fruition. So I think if you narrow that gate, right? And just kind of give like this, like one path forward, whether it's the hilly path or the flat path, either way, that's the path, right? And then that becomes the journey and the journey becomes the experience and that becomes the product, right? Um, it's totally related, actually, to what Juno was talking about. Yeah. Sort of like, okay, it's leaking, put a bucket underneath it. Yeah. yeah. It's like, and that takes out all of the, like, I wonder if they're going to fix this. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm mad that this isn't fixed. Yeah. Or, oh, I don't understand. It's like, it's an agreement. This is the, yeah. this is the Offer premise. the solution. Yeah. 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 You know, yeah. I, 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 uh, I like to say people come to me, like, you know, in our giant space, right? Like, imagine you put a screwdriver down, and you don't remember where it is, right? So, like, it can take it can take a day for me to find a fucking grinder wheel, right? Um, but my my whole thing with that, right? I've, I've distilled it down to this: look with your eyes, not with your mouth. Don't ask me because I don't know. Just get out there and find it, you know. Like that's that's it. You just solve the problem, right? It's like that's you know. If you're wondering, here's your answer. Just go find it, you know. Um, all right, so we're going to do this rapid fire session. I think what I'm going to do is we're going to go down the line and I'm going to give three questions, three questions, three questions, three questions, instead of doing one across. Um, we'll start at the other end. Okay. Ebids, you ready? Ready. All right. Besides the pandemic, what is the biggest challenge your organization has faced in the last five years? Keep it, keep it short. We're finding money. Yeah. Okay. I, was gonna, I feel you. I feel All right. Where, where do you? Where do you? Oh, I'm going to say the same thing. Okay. Is it, I, I designed this so that we all say the same thing, right? Okay. Um, so uh, <laughs> it's a little social engineering. Um, all right. So uh, where do you see your program five years from now? Still serving our artists. If it changes, it's because we listened. Are you there? Oh. What? Oh no, no. I mean, will you be there? Oh, probably in some form. Okay. Good. I like that. Um, if you had a genie in a, in, your, in a bottle, what would your three organizational wishes be? Money can only be one of them. Okay, fair. <laughs> um, oh, okay, super engaged board. Okay. Like a, a, everybody finding their path. Um, a 
uh, money. Mm. <laughs> and uh, better health insurance options in the world. God, it's the worst. <laughs> like, yes. Really, you know, we offer health insurance to all our employees and a 401k. Wow. God bless. Yes. Nice. We, st we still operate yeah. on 1099. Mm. Anyway. Um, okay. I know, we're working on that next, next year, next year. 1040s for AI. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll see about that. Yeah, I know. Well, so the, the, the accountants will let me know. I'll give you one of my wishes for that. All right. That's, that's my third wish. All right, all right, all right, all right. You ready? Yeah. Besides the pandemic, what are the biggest challenges your organization has faced in the last five years? Uh, we are based in New Jersey, and headquarters is in New York. So I can't write a grant through Oh, Shishama. shit. If anyone has any ideas, please let me know. Oh. That company in New Jersey immediately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or or right? what yeah. if we what if we offshore everything to the Caymans? Now we're talking. My parents don't live there anymore. Just kidding. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I'm sorry. We we being personal. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 right. <laughs> no, we're not. Well, anyway. Cut the we, we probably could. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Josh. Uh, What's the question? Where do you see your program five years from now? Hopefully in the same place. Ooh, I like it. Oh, All nice. right? And if you had a genie in a bottle, what would your three organizational wishes can be? Money can only be one. Money. Um, Number one. My space. Keeping the space. Or a new space. Space. Bigger in New Jersey. Or a few more spaces. Like, Ooh, see, we've, now. We've, okay, we've, Anita, we've, we've been looking. We've been looking. So if anyone has ideas. We should talk. Because mm -hmm. uh, uh, Anita's down for another couple of shishamas I've in got New a, Jersey. I've got, a, I've got, I've got, anyway. We'll, yes, that's, okay, that's my that's wish. That's another panel. Thank All you right, for, great. Thank you for that. Here we go. It happened here. It happened that. on film. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, <laughs> do you know, besides the pandemic, what is the biggest challenge your organization has faced in the past five years? Uh, it's all been building related. Um, and if not building related, uh, staff turnover? Including me. I, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, Donna. <laughs> well, I love Gina. Well, I have the job because she left. So yeah, right. <laughs> you're doing awesome. Thank you. I recommended that. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where do you see your program five years from now? Uh, assuming that building, Gallery Farrell stays in that building. Uh, I guess would love to like just keep the residency going um, and to if to if I'm still there to solve this perennial question I have of what the heck is a community art show uh, and in that's another panel and to and I would answer it mm. but I I would okay. need I would need the five years all right all right um, if you had a genie in a bottle what would your three organizational wishes be money can only be one uh, strong board with eye for fundraising. Um, uh, uh, well, I like how you're gonna put that in there twice, but keep going. A new, <laughs> a new and accessible building, because you could only you could only like you could only build accessibility in so far with like grandfathered in buildings, and good Wi-Fi. Good answer. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's I like cool. it. I like it. I like. Cave. All right. Besides the pandemic, what is the biggest challenge your organization has faced in the last five years? Turnover. Um, our technically, er, our fellows in the space um, only are supposed to hold the position for three years, and then it switches. So all of the tools that I manage and mesh, they that all gets just turned over, and usually it's taught by the person who was previously in the oh, position. Man. That's a tough. One. Yeah. All right. Uh, where do you see your program five years from now? Do you want the optimistic answer? Sure. Um, so. Optimistically, I would love to see it become a sort of incubator for skill-based learning. Um, there's this wonderful opportunity, for, and also like makerspace learning, um, because it's literally an education school that has a makerspace in it. So that could be a cool place for workshops and people to come and work on skill pedagogy. Mm. All right. Uh, if you had a genie in a bottle, what would your three organizational wishes be? And I know that at Columbia University, money doesn't necessarily have to be one. Money actually is one, believe it or not. <laughs> I 
Um, and because okay. it's uh, the money, there is money, but it does. I don't know where it goes. Um, <laughs> not <laughs> the Caymans <laughs> goes somewhere. Um, money, and then also, um, I believe there should be a full time. There, sh there should be at least a one, if not more, full time faculty in this space, or uh, faculty and a and a technician. Um, for the space, and then another space. Um, our space is way too small for everything that it's supposed to support, and um, yeah, it would be really cool. Awesome. All right. Fantastic. Okay. Yay. Yay. So, what about garden shifts five-year plan? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, question. good question. I thought I'd get away with that. Besides the pandemic, what's Thanks. the biggest Thanks, challenge your organization <laughs> faced in the last five years? Um, <laughs> uh, funding huh, can only see. be one. <laughs> so uh, the biggest challenge that we have faced, um, I think, is trying to magic up programming, people, physical resources, tools, activities, and all of that for the no money that we make every Why year. Why is that so hard all at once? I know, right? You know, I, we do an okay job. You know, I, I, I say this all the time. I live at the other end of the depreciation spectrum, right? So we buy parts, and then we make things with parts. And like Steve, you know, uh, the, from over here in this building, he calls me the junk man because if I see something that I think may perhaps someday have some value, I take it, I put it in a bucket, and I bring it across the street, right? Um, but we've been able to kind of like cobble, duct tape, spit tape, whatever you want to call it, put things together. Um, you know, you need a gearbox. I'm like, well, we need a five to one gear reduction. And Neil's like, oh, what about that saw we took apart two years ago? I think that's, uh, I'll be right back. And he'll disappear with the forklift and he'll come down with a crate. We'll dig through and we're like, oh, we have two choices. There's a seven to one and a five to one. Let's figure it out, you know? Um, I don't think this. Where do you uh, see your I, program in five years? <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Um, so, I would love to be here, still kicking and grooving and moving. Um, my world domination plan, right, yeah. is to take yeah. gardenship and to start breaking off uh, from the. We'll call this the center of the wagon wheel into nodes, right? So. Uh, I would love a space in Pittsburgh that operates identically to here, right? My Pittsburgh fam, thank you, thank you. Um, we are have some loose talks with maybe a program in Atlanta. Um, I really, really, really would love to be down at Sandy Hook with a program, like, which is why we'll talk later. Oh, oh and, I, yeah, and there's some, there's the some thinking and some talking and some yakking. At the yakking communion party. the RFPs that are out? So yes, so it's, we're we're gonna talk before the night's out, and we're gonna put our collective resources together um, to figure that out. Um, I will answer my own genie in a bottle question. I would like uh, money. Mm -hmm. I would like a machine that makes money. <laughs> <laughs> and I would like and I would like to find some money, right? Um, you know, we're we're new. We haven't actually even been in business for five years, so to speak. Uh, oh I think gosh. we are. A nonprofit as of two years ago. Um, we incorporated in October 2019. So we are coming wow. up. Actually, I think we're five years this. Uh, yeah. wow. No, we're four years. Sorry, we're four years. We'll be five years next year. But um, but that's it. So we're still sort of new and kind of trying to find ourselves, so to speak. But not really. We just need money. So yeah. if anybody has money and they need to get rid of money, come find me after, um, and I'll buy you some coffee. And me. Yeah. yeah. You know? Like, yeah. when we'll have a fight. Yeah, just exactly. Kidding. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, but uh, anyway, all right. So we have seven minutes until I'm going to kick everybody money out. Machine? So I'm going to take seven questions. Oh. All right, we're going to start with you because you were up first, and then we're going to go to you, and then we'll figure out the next one. All right. I'm our artistic director of a small community. We have 50 studios with 30 artists in it. In Pacific. We don't have air conditioning. We don't need air conditioning. We don't have heat because we really don't need heat. But if they only pay a dollar a square foot and put in 42 hours worth of body to help with this place. I want to know from all five of you, because I'm going to take your answer to my board, how much are you charging that is an excellent question. Um, does anybody know? 
the calculus know. offhand? I don't know, but every studio at Gallery of Fair was $295. Huh. So it's it's probably, it's probably some, some are big, some are not as big, but I'd say it's averaging it's maybe 50 cents a square yeah, foot. Yeah, 50 cents or six bucks a foot yeah. a year. Um, yeah. We, uh, yeah, across the street, I'll tell you, we are, um, I like to take what the sort of like comp average is and cut that in half. So we charge, uh, it's somewhere around 18 bucks a foot a year. So it's like $1.50 a square foot a year. Um, but that is all in, right? That includes your Wi-Fi, that includes your heat, that includes your access to me and all my swear words. Yeah. I got you beat $1.41 a square foot and you get me and, and Wi-Fi. And maybe a, a solo show if you're really you know if you're lucky yeah. and you and you bake the right cookies. I I say we're probably about a dollar a square foot for the studios, but we provide housing and professional development and exhibition opportunities and staff support. So it, we're like a, a very wide scope program. If you actually just look at the studios, it's probably a dollar a square foot. Is the is the housing? Do you do you pay for housing uh, outside of the studio arrangement? No. That's all baked in. For no, that, it's like for a that. it's a programmatic fee that caps out at nine hundred dollars a month, and sometimes there are paid fellowships. It's it's like self assessed sliding scale. You also need to find money. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and it's like seventy five percent subsidized already. You know, it's yeah, nobody's yeah. paying like actual cost. Yeah, even for Hudson Valley. Yeah. You, you have a fifteen thousand. It's a fifteen thousand dollar cabinet. <laughs> yeah. So that's yeah. Uh, the joke I was going to make yeah. is you can have a fifty thousand dollar cabinet uh, at an institution. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's terrible. Oh, what, what and you oh, get okay. a piece of paper. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and me. Yeah. Uh, hi. Thank you all. Yes. Um, I was curious. I like we're talking about. Oh. The, you know what? Oh. Can somebody? Can we pass? We're, 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 we're trying to get this on the internet. All right, thank you guys. Um, we're talking about like interconnectivity and relying on one another because of systems of like financial strain. And I think you could all answer this in a way longer timeline than two minutes. But how are you finding these very like real conditions of existing as an artist impacting the work that's being made in your different institutions and spaces? Like you all, Wasaic, an educational facility, like a gallery, you're all encompassing like contemporary artists and how are you finding that these like very real conditions are changing the like reliance on interdisciplinarity and in the work that's being made? Um, can, I, can I whack at that real quick? Yeah. Um, I think that what that does is it, it kind of takes us back to this container idea, right? So like you, that becomes one of the confines or the strictures in which you're sort of like bounded and your choices become limited, right? So what that's done, and I've seen this in real time with my population, right, is like somebody comes to me and they say, I really want to make this sculpture. Um, and you know, everybody tells me I should make it in bronze. And I say, okay, and we actually had this conversation earlier. Like bronze, I think I'm with like, you know, out of our founder, I think we're selling bronze as a material at like $17 or something absolutely ridiculous a pound, right? Um, it's insane, right? Like the sheet of bronze is not like fucking three grand. Like who can make the shit out of it, right? Nobody. So what that does is that forces you to think then how, it, and it really, it pushes that like technical question into the creative side of your brain where you need to figure out like what is the workaround, right? What is the acceptable other thing? Or something else that happens is like what is the amazing change that that produces in the work, right? So for some folks it becomes well, I was gonna make this piece of sculpture, but actually now we're gonna kind of do this digital and Josh is just gonna 3D print it for me in the office, right? And if we like it, maybe down the road, we'll do a fundraiser and we'll be able to cast it in metal. But then what that's done is like, it's forced them into putting a file in the computer, which now they can do all kinds of other crazy shit with, right? It's like, and then, and then now then maybe that drops into a piece of AR thing that they're doing down the way, right? Yeah. So I think like, at least in, in my experience over across the street is it really, it puts up another wall or another lane inside that box that kind of really forces you to take a good look at what it is you're making and how you want to do that, if that answers your question. Yeah, absolutely. We're coming from Cranbrook, which is like the vessel of this as well. Like old, oh, old yeah. building, none of us oh, have yeah. money. Sure. Like it's, sure, you sure, know, sure. like it's, we get it. Sure, sure, uh, sure. But I think all of you can answer this in so do many you guys, different do, ways. Are you guys issued like fuck Bauhaus t-shirts as you <laughs> um, I will not be wearing that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you. 
I like to think, though, that um, sometimes the students who come through, we get to kind of do the opposite of that, where we're like, oh, no, make whatever, you know, like, we'll, we'll make, it's a very, like, kind of make it work thing until crit's over. And then it's like, oh, you ha no, no, you have to get it out of the space. Now you, have to, now you have to get it out. You have to find a new home for it. So, like, there is that part of it. But also I've seen a huge shift to digital um, within our space as well because we have the digital tech available to the students. Um, they can sort of access this bigger world um, inside of the computer as opposed to um, taking up a lot of space in our space. Um, and then I forgot I had another thing, but it's gone now. I just, I just second what Josh was talking about. People get resourceful. Yeah, it really, I mean, it just like makes you think. Right? Yeah. It's like, okay, well, I've yeah. got scraps in the shop. You know, I, with those or, yeah. we, we, we had was, somebody, we had somebody last year that really wanted to do this sort of like live casting thing. And basically I was like, well, honestly, like, well, there's a stack of cardboard, there's a drill in a bucket, like, why don't you just go like whack the thing up in, in paper pulp for now, yeah. you know? And then that kind of triggered this whole other experience for them where they kind of like have like shifted some work and are really kind of like headed down that rabbit hole of mm -hmm. like paper making and like what the pulp is made on all of that. So, oh, that um, and I think that really, I think that's like a, uh, it, it, this, these sort of like elegant accidents or like sort of like, you know, like um, asinine solutions, right? Become this like whole other avenue of work and thought. Mm -hmm. It's um, like the best part. Yep. All right. Next question. Anybody? Anybody? Um, less uh, less uh, professional of a question, but colorful. Um, for all of uh, the panelists, in an ideal world, not saying that this would uh, uh, you know exist in reality. What uh, instance in in history, like art group, uh, art happening, intentional community, personally resonates with you most? That. Uh, inspires you or you would like to see in the world? Well, that's a problem. I'm gonna jump in. Well, yeah, I, yeah, get I, in there. I started out with uh, Kate Millett's farm, like the women's art colony, and that's been feeding me throughout my career. Like I went from Kate's farm to PS1, where I was the chief reparator for a year, where we merged with MoMA, and then whatever, but like it started at Up in Poughkeepsie with Kate Millett, and, mm. and it's still with me. Um, right now is really good. I think I'm I'm personally a, a painter and collage artist, and I think some of the most some of the most exciting painting that's happening right now is also some of the like ugliest, most confounding. Like, why would you depict that in a painting? Kind of painting that's happening, and I love that. Um, and so, <laughs> hey, if portraiture can come back, it's all on the table. You do. You do. I'm also a portrait painter, and so it, like, <laughs> and so it uh, it all. I think. I think we're in like a like a post 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 whatever the heck, <laughs> um, but with a with a really artists have absorbed the internet and have sort of like spat it out onto canvas, um, and I don't think there's a name for it in a textbook yet, but it's happening and it's been happening since maybe 2017 or a little prior, and that's where that's where I love I love where painting's at right now, and so I love to be where it is at right now. If not, then uh, like post-war Japan, I love Buto, I love uh, Yayoi Kusama, I love uh, the electric dress, I love performance of that time. I wish I was there, I, I'm not, I wasn't. I wasn't born yet. <laughs> Biodome with Pauly Shore. <laughs> Um, and we got another, anybody? Yeah. Did you have a question? Somebody? Somebody, there was a hand up over here? No? Mm -hmm. No? No. Well, we gotta have a couple more. Well, uh, no, no, we don't. We, we, we can wait some snacks. Okay, all right, all right. very of the moment in our time question right now, which is what's making the building shake every uh, once in a while? So this is interesting. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be quick about this and then we'll go have some snacks and some okay. drinks. Um, we are on a peninsula. So we are in one of the lowest physical land points in New Jersey, right? Mm -hmm. We are at or below sea level. Right here, we're probably about three, maybe two and a half feet above sea level on this floor right here. Um, 
We are the confluence of the Hackensack and Passaic River. It's what makes Kearney Point. Um, we have a CSX rail siding that basically comes around and across and kind of like right down the center of the peninsula. It, it, it shadows Central Avenue, which runs right along over here. Um, at the end of that is the uh, end of the line for the CSX garbage train. So a lot of the garbage in New Jersey is processed through here. If you guys really want the full experience, come hang out on a low tide in August, right? When the wind is just right, mwah. Amazing, right? But what you're feeling right now is there is two parts of the track, and if we were walking and it was sunny out, I'd go show you where they are, where the ballast has shifted a little bit because the land underneath us is absolute garbage. Um, and, and sometimes literally. And, and yeah, literally, right? And, and as they pull the trains together, they pull them together, and then as they add cars, they slam the cars into each other. So as the train gets bigger, that ricochet and rack goes through the system and that's kind of what you're feeling under your feet here. I never would have guessed that. Yeah, so it's it's you. Yeah, yeah, it's a, you know, everything down here is just it's like nothing it, it, it's a bizarre wonderland of insanity. Thank you so much. Yep. Yeah. No problem. No problem. I'm glad I could use help. Thank you everybody for coming. Thank you so much. And thank you, thank you to Carney Point for having us and uh, thank you to the International Sculpture Center for having us involved. And everybody, let's go party across the street. Let's go commune. The food, the food should be set up. Way. And yes, let's go commune. Yes. And, um, you know, food and holler. Good job. Good job. Good job. Thank you, guys. Oh, I like High fives. 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 High f